just as you did when inserting the doors in the previous exercise. You'll use the opening shown in the PDF from Scan 2 to place your windows at the correct location. Before inserting these windows, we need to configure the window settings. To start, select the Window tool from the Building Shell tool set and click the Preferences button in the toolbar. In the General tab, set the Width field to 10 feet 8 inches and the Height field to 4 feet and the Elevation and Wall field to 96 inches. Also, set the Sash drop-down menu to Custom. This allows you to create custom sash openings with as many sashes as you want. Click the Custom Sash Options button below the drop-down menu to customize the sash opening. When the dialog box appears, set the Number of Columns field to 3. For this window, we want the middle sash to be wider than the two sashes on the end. To do this, click the right arrow in the bottom left corner of the dialog box. This should highlight the middle sash in red. Now, set the width field for the selected sash to 6 feet 6.5 inches and check the option Lock Sash Configuration. This means the selected sash dimensions will be locked and the dimensions for all other unlocked sashes will change according to this overall dimension of the window and the dimensions of the locked sash. This is why the dimensions for the two sashes on the end changed. Click the right arrow once more to highlight the sash on the right and check the option Include Muntins. Then click the left arrow twice to highlight the right sash and check Include Muntins for this sash as well. Once complete, click OK and go to the Jam and Sash tab. In this tab, set the jam width to 3 quarters of an inch and check the option Use Wall Depth. Click OK to return to the drawing area. With the window tool configured properly, you can now insert it into a wall. Zoom to the bottom left corner of the building and click twice to insert the window here at the opening shown. At the next location for this window, in the top left corner of the building, we have an exact dimension to use. Activate the second mode in the toolbar, Offset Insertion Mode. Also, enable the fourth mode in the toolbar, Align Object Left Mode. Now click on the corner to the left of the opening. Move your cursor to the right and click at any point along the wall. Then move your cursor to the right once more so that the preview flips to the right. Now click again. This will open the Enter Offset dialog box. In the Offset field, input a value of 1 feet 11 and 3 eighths inches and also Choose Insertion Point for the option Offset Using, then click OK. When you return to your drawing area, you'll see the window move 1 feet 11 and 3 eighths inches away by its left edge. You can switch back to the first mode in the toolbar, and also switch back to Align Object Origin Mode, and insert another window in the opening just to the right of the window you've just inserted. However, the width of this window should be smaller. To quickly change the width of this window, while it's still selected, go to the Object Info Palette and change the width field from 10 feet 8 inches to 8 feet 10 inches, and press the Enter key to lock in the value. You'll need to insert a few more windows with this same width of 8 feet 8 inches, so again we can use the Create Similar Objects command. This time, instead of right-clicking on the window, hold Command and Option on a Macintosh, or Control and Alt on Windows. Notice the cursor changes to an eyedropper. Click on the last window you inserted. Now, the Window tool will use the same parameters set with this specific window. You can now continue and insert a window in these two openings near the bottom left of the building. For the smaller window located below the windows you just placed, go back to the Window Preferences in the toolbar. Then in the General tab, set the Width field to 4 feet and change the Sash drop-down menu to Casement. Click OK to return to the drawing area and insert the window based on the opening shown in the PDF on Design Layer Scan 2. 
There's one of more of these small casement windows located toward the top left of the building. Place another one here. Now you're finished with this particular type of window. Next you'll need to configure another custom sash window. Again with the window tool still active, click the preferences button in the toolbar. In the general tab, set the width field to 6 feet, the height field to 8 feet 7 inches, the elevation in wall field to 0, and also choose sill of window for the elevation reference. Additionally, choose custom sash from the sash drop down menu, then click the custom sash options button. When the dialog box appears, set the number of rows field to 2 and the number of columns field to 1. Click OK twice to return to the drawing area and click twice at the shown opening to insert the window. You're almost done with the windows for this floor. There are just a few fixed glass windows to be inserted in the walls in this area. To create this window, Select the Window tool and click the Preferences button in the toolbar. In the Window Settings from the General tab, set the Sash drop-down to Fixed Glass. Also, set the Width to 15 feet, the Height to 5 feet, the Elevation in Wall to 4 feet, and the Elevation reference to Sill of Window. Then click OK to return to the drawing area. Just as before, Place your window at the same location shown, and use the PDF scan as a reference for the best placement for the window. After inserting this window, go back to the Window Preferences and change the Width field to 25 feet, the Height field to 8 feet, the Elevation in Wall field to 1 foot, and the Elevation reference to Sill of Window. Once you click OK, place a window at the two openings shown. So far, you've only created windows using the window tool, but sometimes when you have a uniquely shaped window, you'll need to create it from scratch and create a symbol to be inserted in the wall. This is the case for the next type of window you'll be creating. First, select this wall. Then in the navigation palette, set the roof layer to visible. Also, switch to a back view from the view bar and zoom in on the highlighted wall. You'll be creating a triangular shaped window in this wall. Select the Polygon tool from the basic tool palette and make sure Vertex Mode is enabled. Now click at the same three points as shown. Don't forget to use the Snap Loop to temporarily zoom in for a better view. Once the triangle is completed, Select the Offset tool from the Basic Tool Palette and enable the mode Offset by Distant and Offset Original Object in the toolbar. Also in the toolbar, set the Distance field to 1 foot. After that, click inside the existing triangle to create a smaller offset of the original. Again, return to the toolbar and enable Offset and Duplicate mode and change the Distance field to 2 inches. Then. Click inside the existing triangle once again. A smaller duplicate will be created inside the current triangle. Next, press the X key to switch to the Selection tool and select both triangles. Right-click on one of the selected triangles and choose Clip Surface from the Context menu. Normally you would delete the smaller object that's been clipped, but in this case we keep it, as this will be the glass portion of the window. Now, select the larger polyline and go to Model, Extrude. When the Create Extrude dialog box appears, set the Extrusion field to 11 and 5 eighths of an inch and click OK to create the extrude. Now, select the smaller triangle and go to Model, Extrude. This time, set the Extrusion field to 0.125 inches and click OK. While this second extrude is still selected, go to the Render tab in the Object Info Palette. 
locate the Texture drop-down menu and choose Glass Clear. Now that you have both the frame and the glass for your window, let's create a symbol from these two extrudes and insert it into the wall properly. While holding the Shift key, select both the smaller triangle and the larger polyline, then go to Modify, Create Symbol. In the Create Symbol dialog box, name the symbol Triangular Window. Also, make sure the option Insert in Walls is checked, along with Leave Instance in Place. Also, check the option Change 2D Objects from Layer Plane to Screen Plane. Once set, you can click OK to return to the drawing area. If you open the resource browser and view the resources in your active document, you should now see the new window symbol there. So, if you should want to use the symbol again, it's already available and doesn't require you to go through creating the object over again. Now go back to the Modify menu and select Edit Symbol. This will take you to the symbol's geometry. Although the window looks correct from this view, when you switch to a top plan view from the view bar, you'll see the glass pane is not centered in the frame. To center it, zoom in close enough so that you can see and select the thin extrude at the bottom. Then click and drag this extrude by its left end point. Snap it to the midpoint of the edge it shares with the frame. You've set the glass pane position in 3D. Now let's take a second to create the 2D geometry for this window symbol. Select the rectangle tool from the basic tool palette and enable the first mode, rectangle mode. First, click the top left corner of the window frame and then the bottom right corner. Next, switch to the line tool and move your cursor along the top edge of the frame close to the left corner until you see the cursor cue end point. Once this cursor cue appears, click to set the first point of the line. Then follow the dashed line shown below the end point and click at the bottom edge of the frame to create the line. Do the same with the line tool from the right edge of the frame. Lastly, draw a line from the midpoint of the line on the left to the midpoint of the line on the right. Click the Exit Symbol button in the top right to return to the drawing area. We should still be displaying a back view. Again, choose Top Plan from the Standard View menu in the View Bar. Also, set the Roof Layer back to Invisible. After changing views, you can see the window is not in the correct location. To insert the window into the wall, simply click and drag from its current location and release the symbol once the wall is highlighted. Don't forget to use the PDF scan as a reference for the best placement. The windows for this floor are now complete. Take a second to render an OpenGL. And use the flyover tool to see your results. Then return to a top plan view when you're finished. To create the circular windows for this building, we'll use the Window tool, just as we've done with most of the windows thus far. This time, we can move through the steps a little more quickly. Before you begin, go to the Navigation palette and set Design Layers Floor 2 and Scan 2 to Invisible, and Design Layers Floor 1 and Scan 1 to Visible. Also, make Floor 1 the active design layer. Activate the Window tool and click the Preferences button in the toolbar. When the dialog box appears, choose Circle from the Window Shape drop-down menu. Also, set the Width field to 48 inches. Then, set the Elevation in Wall field to 48 inches as well. Next, go to the Jam and Sash tab and set the Jam Width field to 4 inches and the Jam Depth field to 11 and 5 eighths inches. Then click OK to close the window preferences. To place the circular window in the drawing, insert the window at the opening shown in the PDF near the bottom left corner of the building 
by double clicking. Another circular window should be inserted near the top left corner of the building. As usual, use the PDF as a visual reference for best placement. A circular window should also be placed on the second floor. So temporarily, set Floor 1 and Scan 1 to Invisible, and Floor 2 and Scan 2 to Visible, and make Floor 2 the active design layer. Now, insert the circular window near the top left corner of the building. For the rest of the windows, you'll use the Create Similar Objects command with the Window tool. Hold the Option and Command keys on Macintosh or the Alt and Control keys on Windows and click the window to the left of the circular window you've just inserted. This will activate the Window tool with the parameters of the window you just selected. Since you are still working on the Floor 2 design layer, in the Navigation palette, set Floor 2 and Scan 2 back to Invisible and make Floor 1 and Scan 1 visible. Also, make Floor 1 the active design layer. This window will be inserted at around the same location the window on the second floor, so use the PDF scan as a reference to place it. For the next window, located above and slightly to the right of the one you just placed, activate the second mode in the toolbar, Offset Insertion Mode. Also, enable the fourth mode in the toolbar, Align Object Left Mode. Now click on the corner to the left of the opening. Move your cursor to the right and click at any point along the wall. Then move your cursor to the right once more so that the preview flips to the right. Now click again. This will open the Enter Offset dialog box. In the Offset field, input a value of 1 feet 11 and 3 eighths inches and also choose Insertion Point for the option Offset Using then click OK. When you return to your drawing area, you'll see the window move 1 feet 11 and 3 eighths inches away by its left edge. You're almost done with the windows and doors for the building. In the following videos, you'll learn to create curtain walls for the entrances and curved windows for the round wall in the lecture hall. So now is a good time to stop and render in OpenGL and take a look at your progress with the flyover tool. When you're done, return to a top plan view.